Armored tank, the ultimate symbol of brute force. For decades, these big dogs of ground warfare have brought intimidation to battlefields on every conceivable terrain, from the jungle to the desert to the urban battleground. Tonight, we go behind closed doors into the all-male world of the Armored Forces Tank School. Here in Fort Knox, Kentucky, U.S. Army soldiers are training for the digital age in the fastest, most lethal, and most survivable fighting machine on land, the M1A2 Abrams tank. With a sticker price of four and a half million dollars, the M1A2 weighs in at 70 tons and boasts more computer power than the first space shuttle. This is definitely not your father's tank. When the armored tank was introduced by the British in World War I, it changed the face of war forever. From General Patton's Battle of the Bulge in World War II, to the dense jungle of Vietnam, to the sands of Desert Storm, and the streets of Kosovo, tanks have become the backbone of our ground forces. Interestingly, the tanks have really remained a mainstay in our arsenal over the last 50 years. Why is that? Tanks are uh, you know, spearhead of the offensive force, uh, and it's uh, absolutely necessary when, when you're facing other armor. The firepower is one thing, but the shock action, the size of the vehicle, the, uh, the intimidation that it brings. Today's Abrams tank brings that intimidation factor to a whole new level. This is a 1,500 horsepower gas turbine engine. The fastest tank in the world, do 45 miles an hour against any kind of terrain. It rides like a Cadillac. When you're driving, you have 70 tons doing whatever you want it to do. It's all behind you. It's the greatest feeling of power that you'll ever have. At nine and a half feet tall, the tank is massive on the outside, but the inside space for the four-man crew is not for the claustrophobic. The driver sits in the front of the tank, while a loader, gunner, and commander share a separate cramped compartment. How hot does it get? It gets very hot. Uh, there's no air conditioning. There's no air conditioning, but uh, we just have to cope with it. Uh, we have a fan that can move some air, but you just learn to live with it. Well, how long might soldiers be in a tank and when they're out in war? We go out routinely and spend two weeks, and, and you'll virtually stay, live, eat, sleep on that tank for two weeks. Okay, the obvious question is, is there a bathroom on board? No, ma'am. You just uh, you go off the back deck. For the last 60 years, anyone who has learned to drive, fire, or command a tank in the U.S. Army has learned it here at Fort Knox. Yes, it's the same Fort Knox that holds our nation's gold. It's also one of five basic training centers for the Army. <laughs> Every year, more than 20,000 recruits come here for the nine weeks that will transform them from civilians into soldiers. Fewer than one in five will qualify as a tanker. Colonel, what kind of soldier makes a good tanker? A real aggressive soldier. We're the attacking force. We go out and take ground. So you got to have somebody that has that personality, that aggressive, take it regardless of everything mentality the whistle the reason there are no women among the young recruits who train here is because these soldiers are training for armor and cavalry divisions both are considered combat units and under congressional law off limits to female soldiers that's the main gun that's the caliber 50 machine gun in an unprecedented exception, the Army agreed to allow me to train as a tanker. My goal was to learn to drive, load, and fire an Abrams tank. What advice do you have for me? What are the need-to-know things? It's a very dangerous vehicle. It really doesn't care whether it's you or the bad guy. The tank is kind of dumb. So you have to really respect it. We try to make it as safe as we can in there for the, for the crew, but fundamentally it's made to go out and kill people and blow up things. Howdy! An actual question, everybody's gonna sign off with yes, drill sergeant. 
Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Sergeant! Privates, you better get motivated. Do you understand? Yes, Mr. Sergeant! Now, who is missing their ID tags? Drill Sergeant Anton Jenkins would teach me the basics, just as he does with the new recruits. What's the most important concept that you want these young recruits to leave here with? Oh, definitely the teamwork, to help each other out, because in that four-man crew, they have to have it. You know, that's the main thing I want them to remember. You've been doing a lot of yelling at these guys. Oh, a lot, John. Yeah? Yes. How loud? Yell at me. Loud as this! Joan, what are you talking about? That's all you can do? No, I can get a lot louder! Do you understand what I am trying to tell you? Yes, Drill Sergeant Jenkins. All right. <laughs> do you talk to your wife that way? Oh, no, not at all, John. <laughs> My first mission? To learn to drive the M1A2. We began behind closed doors in a nondescript building that could give Disneyland a run for its money. Before a new soldier can get behind the wheel of an M1A2 tank, he must spend hours in the classroom. But this classroom is unlike any he's ever seen before. Looking like something right out of Star Wars, each of these $9 million simulators recreates the driving environment in the Abrams tank. Open up the door. All right. Hands on the bar right oh. above you. Feet on, the, feet on the steps. Slide in feet first. The interior of the simulator is a scale model of the tank's driving compartment, a small cockpit with a 120-degree view of the terrain. The simulator has an automatic transmission and steers with a handlebar like a motorcycle. Twist back, that's your gas. Faster. Okay. You got it right on the That's all there is to driving this tank. After a quick run through, I was good to go. Okay, Miss London. Give it a little gas. Just a little bit. Just twist back, just nice and easy. Okay. All right. And I was off, driving a tank in virtual reality. We're going to take it right here to stop sign. From the control center, my instructor put me through various driving scenarios, from streets to desert to forest. I'm okay? You're all right. Whoa! I don't want to hit that tree. I'm going to the desert mode. Okay. I'm going fast. It feels really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! That's what it feels like when you crash. All right. But not a big deal. Okay. Move out. I'm not stopping for the stop no, sign. Stop, stop, stop. I don't have to. Whoa! All right, driver, let's go. Shoot artillery at it. Got a safe tank. Whoa! Suddenly, my tank was being hit with virtual artillery, and driving became a lot more difficult. Hard right. Whoa! Hard right. Cool. Grab hold of the rails. <laughs> to get to do that all day long would kind of be worth shaving your head. <laughs> of the 8,000 tanks in the Army's arsenal, 300 are used for training here at Fort Knox. Using the same turbine engine as a helicopter, the tank runs on a blend of jet and diesel fuel. To top off the tank, it takes 500 gallons. Gas mileage, three-fifths of a mile per gallon. All right, John, go ahead and grab this handle with your right hand, and then just pull yourself on up. I was now right, ready to drive an actual first. tank. Woo, this is tight. And just adjust it so that it's comfortable while you're driving. OK, what I'm going to do right now is jump inside the turret and give you a radio check and let you know when to start it up. All right, I'm ready. Go ahead, go ahead. With my drill sergeant in the commander's position, we now would communicate only by radio. All right, John, I want you to go ahead and push the start button. I would start on the same three-mile paved course used to train all new tankers. OK, let's move out. Right ahead. Whoa. Get the feel of it. 
The sensation of driving a 70-ton tank was a bit overwhelming at first. My instinct was to slow down on the turns, but I quickly discovered that the tank handles better with a little speed. Wow, it's so responsive. I was beginning to understand why they call the Abrams the Cadillac of tanks. The ride is amazingly smooth. Although governed to a maximum speed of 45 miles per hour, the tank is capable of speeds in excess of 60. Okay, let's kick her in the tail. After a few trips here, I mastered the basics, and I was ready to take the tank off-road. It didn't take long driving on the red clay hills to realize the sheer power and agility of the tank. The massive 10-ton tracks make this the ultimate all-terrain vehicle. A little scary at first, just because there's, it's so big and heavy, and you know that if you make a wrong move, it's just mammoth mistake. But it was really cool. It's one thing to drive a tank, quite another to fire it. When we come back, I go inside the turret as the tank commander for an up-close look at the firepower of this massive weapon. On the way. Day two at the U.S. Army's tank school in Fort Knox, Kentucky. My previous day's training as a driver had given me an appreciation for the speed and mobility of the 70-ton Abrams tank. Today's mission would give me an understanding of the real purpose of this vehicle as an armored weapon of combat. We are the most deployable force in the United States Army. There are more tankers deployed more often than any other branch in the U.S. Army, even more than the Special Forces. Because when we get on the ground, that shows the other people that America's serious. When tanks are deployed, they don't go into combat alone. Four tanks make up a platoon, 45 a battalion. Gunner heat, heat, heat. But the real teamwork begins with the four-man crew in each tank. If you can't trust in the loader loading the bullet or the gunner being laid on the target or is the driver driving where he's supposed to, that crew's going to die in combat. You're living and dying together. There's no one person who makes that tank crew go. It's all four soldiers. What you fall back on at 2.30 in the morning when you're on radio watch sitting up and everybody's trying to catch a, a couple of hours sleep is how important you are to that tank and that crew and how you're a piece of it. Every member of the crew is required to perform basic maintenance on the tank. Because everything on this vehicle is so heavy, it often takes two people just to unscrew a bolt. Each track is made up of 180 90-pound blocks linked together. When a track has to be replaced, it's several hours of hard labor. You know that tank better than you know your car. You've got to because it's, it's your home. It's what's going to bring you back to your loved ones. So you, you're going to put everything you have into it. Here in the safety of the hills of Kentucky, much of the training is done with the hatches open. But in combat mode, the hatches of the crew compartment are always closed. Oh, it gets very tough at times. 72, 80 hours at a time where all you, you pop out for a little while, get some fresh air, uh, things like that. It gets very tough. Uh, nerves get very strained. What's the toughest situation you've ever been in? Desert storm. It, it was just tough all around, austere, you know, uh, unsure of what's going to happen, uh, not knowing if you're going to come back. Obviously, you had all the confidence in the world and your crew's abilities, but there's still that what if. You just never know. Inside the armored cocoon, the crew is shielded from chemical, biological, and nuclear fallout that would kill an unprotected soldier on the battlefield. The top secret material that makes up the front armor can withstand almost any impact. How does that armor work? 
Well, that's really classified, and I, and I really can't tell you that. However, if somebody gets hit by fire, they can consider themselves still protected. Oh, yes, absolutely. So what happens, or what does it feel like inside when you're hit? You can't feel a rifle, you can't feel a machine gun, you can't feel a grenade. A bomb, if it's big enough, you'll feel it. Feels like being hit by a, another car, but not quite as bad, because you've got 70 tons of mass around you. We call them lead magnets. A tank is a lead magnet. Everybody will shoot at the tank and let the guys in the, in the smaller vehicles alone. We take all the hits and get them to the objective. With a turret that rotates 360 degrees, the Abrams tank is armed with three machine guns and a 120 millimeter main gun or cannon. Like everything else about a tank, the ammunition is massive. I would be learning to fire a Sabo, a 45 pound uranium dart fired from the main gun. First, I would learn to load the ammunition. Onto the top of that seat. Here's where the upper body strength yes, comes. Yes, ma'am. There hey. you go. You on there. All right, John. I'm going to show you how to load a Sabo round. OK. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you your knee switch, which is located right down there. As soon as I give you the command, load Sabo, using your knee, push it in, and that will make the ammo door automatically open up. OK. Load Sabo. The round will pop out just enough so that you can grab it, the base of the round, with your hand. Now I want you to go ahead and flip it over and load it into the main gun. The Sabo was much heavier than I expected. Go ahead and push it in and slam it in there. Tankers must load these rounds in eight seconds. It took me 14. Sabo loaded. Good job. Ooh. Ooh -ha. <laughs> <laughs> to learn how to fire the tank, it was back to the classroom and another simulator. Okay, Miss Linden, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be taking you through the advanced gunnery training simulator. This is Unlike the driving simulator, this system never leaves the ground. If you'll please go on in there and take a seat in the commander's seat. The firing simulator recreates the inside turret of a tank and the gunner, commander, and loader's positions. Here, tankers develop the teamwork and skills needed when facing an enemy in combat. Okay, ma'am, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, engage a threat array of targets that will be located in your sights. You'll go ahead and engage and destroy the targets to your front and give the proper fire command. Okay. Are you ready? I think so. Okay, let's go. This is how the commander sees the world, through a high magnification thermal sight, which enables him to see enemy tanks up to four miles away. My job was to identify and destroy the target. Loader, load Sabo. Up. Driver, move up. Driver, stop. On the way. Fire. Ooh -ah. Ooh -ah. They're gone. Driver, stop. Although it felt like a video game, this training is very serious. Soldiers must master 10 different engagement scenarios here before they're allowed to fire live ammunition. On the way. This is one of 63 firing ranges here at Fort Knox, where tank crews bring the skills they've mastered in the simulator to the field. Now the training becomes real, very real. On the way. Seven days a week, day and night, the sounds of artillery fire can be heard for miles as crews train here for combat. I would begin my gunnery training with a 50 caliber machine gun. As you're on the fix, don't ride up here, you will kick. As Sergeant Stevenson gave me my safety briefing, I had the sobering realization that I was about to fire one of the most lethal automatic weapons on the planet. Okay, yeah, you ready? Can you see the end of the barrel in that, that tan target right down there? Just my target was nearly half a mile away, but this gun has a range of more than a mile. Charging your weapon. Okay, as soon as you're ready to fire, go ahead and push your trigger and start firing. You're just barely going over. Keep firing. Get used to it. The 50 caliber fires four to five hundred rounds per minute. Okay, I'm going to I'm out. Within seconds, okay. I had gone through a hundred round box of ammunition. Okay. 
Keeping an 85-pound machine gun under control as bullets are traveling 900 feet per second is no easy task, but I did manage to hit the target. Got him before he had a chance to get you. In my final mission at Fort Knox, I would be firing the main gun in a night firing exercise, one of the most difficult engagements for a tank crew. With the Abrams now under my command, I realized that I was about to experience the full impact of its awesome firepower. Through the thermal sight, the targets came into view, old tank hulls nearly a mile away. Range is good. Tankers call firing the main gun busting big caps, and now I understood why. Ready for another one? Yes! Go to the one higher! Okay. Even inside, surrounded by 70 tons of armor, there was an incredible concussion. Give me a call. I'm already trained. Be my wingman any day, ma'am. OK. It's just an amazing feeling. The immensity of this and understanding the consequences of pulling that trigger, I mean, it's just awesome. Really awesome. My two days of training as a tanker with the US Army had given me experiences I would never forget and a deepened respect for the soldiers who train here every day. There should be no time when you're not training. Owe it to all the soldiers that are on that tank crew to give them the best training they can. The more you sweat in peacetime, the less you bleed in war. Tank School, behind closed doors.